Thank you, everybody, for coming. It's a pleasure, a pleasure to be here. Um, I'm going to talk about the what I still keep calling the new public humanities program. It's actually been around for four years now. Uh, this is a program that is uh, trying to do new things to connect the university with the community, with arts, with culture, and with, with training students in a new way for, for a more practical way than usual, perhaps, for Brown, but a, um, a way of, of that gets them into the real world. Our job is to connect students and faculty to arts and culture. That, that's our big job. Um, we do it in a variety of ways. Let me give you a little bit about the history of the house just to, to give you some context. This is the earliest picture of the house, an 1803 drawing by a schoolgirl, back when <laughs> kids really knew, knew how to draw. Uh, and there, of course, is Nicholas Brown, the fellow who Brown was named after. Uh, he gave $5,000 to Brown, and they named the school after him, which shows you something about inflation. One of the things we have in, in the archives of the center, uh, the, the Brown family papers, is the receipt, a little lovely little drawing that he got in exchange for, for his gift to Brown. So it's always a nice thing to point out. House changed over time in a variety of ways. These are drawings from the 1860s. A carriage house was added onto the back. Um, this is interior of the building in the 1890s, a very heavy Victorian sort of place. The um, reason I'm showing you all these pictures is because the building is the center of what we do in many ways. And so knowing about the history and thinking about how it connects with the area around it is something that we think about a lot. So John Nicholas Brown, in some ways, is in some ways an inspiration for our, for our program. He was trained in museums at Harvard. He was in the famous museum course at Harvard. And uh, he was born in 1900, so in about 1920 or so, he was uh, the famous museums course at Harvard trained just about every art museum director in the country for, for 50 years. Um, very interested in historic preservation. I'll come back to this later. Uh, but much of the Benefit Street that we know today is based on uh, the encouragement that John Nicholas Brown gave, gave to that work. Uh, what we now call community cultural development, uh, keeping the, the community uh, alive through arts and culture, is something he did. Uh, he was certainly an entrepreneur. He invented was one of the founders of the Providence Preservation Society, the uh, Preserve Rhode Island. A uh, lot of these organizations he was involved with and, and the family was involved with. He worked in uh, what we now call arts management. He worked in what we can now call arts in the public sphere. Uh, he was on the board of the Smithsonian and the board of the Art Museum at Harvard, uh, at RISD. Uh, and he was very interested in archaeology. Um, we do all of those kinds of things. We are interested in students having this combination of practical skills and academic skills. So we want them to be able to think about what it means to work with community. What is community? What is culture? What does it mean to curate a collection? We want them to know about a content. If you're going to be working in an art museum, where many of our students want to end up, you need to know art history. Uh, we want them to know about how people learn outside of school, uh, how people learn in art museums, how people learn and on all those, in what we now call informal education. Story gathering, storytelling, a lot of oral history work, and a lot of what's now called digital storytelling, the, the hot new field of how to tell stories online over the web. And it turns out there are collections all over Brown. Uh, wonderful things that nobody knows about. In the library, in art galleries, in departments, Brown has a huge butterfly collection. Who knew? Uh, has a herbarium, it has amazing things. And the students track these all down, they put together this exhibition. They learned how to do an exhibition. There were audio tours. There were labels. Uh, they got the materials from the library. Some of you may know that Brown has one of the best stamp collections in the world. Um, not used very much by students, but we, we put all these collections to use. Art collections from the Bell Gallery, the toy soldiers I mentioned in the back there. Uh, the students did a, we have a, in John Nicholas Brown Center actually has a large collection of uh, dance costumes uh, from the 1920s and 30s from the, uh, the new dance group. So the students put this all together. We had a great party for the opening. Uh, they had to figure out how to organize it. They had to figure out what the best collections were. They were each given a certain space. They had to work with the, uh, with the curators and the librarians to figure out what to display, uh, whether it's swords or the the dolls, again, they're amazing things all at Brown. Where we've been putting most of our effort lately is in 
working with the community around Brown. And this is an interesting challenge for us. Um, it's always scary when you're letting students represent Brown to the, to the, to the community. There's lots of history there, lots that, we need to, to, that they need to learn about how to do that. But it's also what's become the most important part of museum work lately is to have the museum work with the community. It's not just a museum curator saying, this is the history, come and look at it. It's building that history, making that history part of a conversation between the, the curator and the community and making it into a, a bigger, more interesting story that way. Getting, getting the, the people that, that are being talked about into the story. So we've done a variety of projects and Providence, of course, with all of its wonderful history, is the perfect place to do this. The biggest project that we've been working on now is, is the Fox Point project. And this is a whole set of interconnected stories and collections and exhibitions and library projects and now digital projects tied to Fox Point, which of course is the area right behind, um, right behind Brown, right next to Brown. So just to give you a little sense of how this ties back to the house and how this is perfect for us, this is 1960 or so. This is, is the Nightingale Brown House, where we're located. And this is, is Benefit Street and then North Main uh, about 50 years ago. So this is the area that, that the, the neighborhood that the house was part of. And then Fox Point starts from here and goes on over. Fox Point was very uh, heavily Cape Verdean, Azorian, Irish in the, from about 1890 up through the 1960s. And it was really the, the Browns, Browns neighborhood. And we are going back and working with that community, um, many of whom have moved away, of course, and trying to document that story. The place we started all of this was with oral history. Uh, Annie Valk, who is the associate director of the center, has, is an oral historian by, by training. And she set up a pretty extensive program as a class project to interview people in the neighborhood who, who had lived in the neighborhood and to collect their stories. And these are being digitized or online. The library is working very closely with us on it. As part of that, uh, they built a photo, photo project as well. And this is, this is a project that just astonished me. I, I told them it would never work. Um, instead of doing the traditional, we just collect the photos, what they've done is work with some uh, local amateur historians in the community to build a Flickr site on the internet using Flickr to, to upload images of these, of the, the uh, pictures of, you know, old family pictures. And there are now 9,000 pictures of Fox Point on Flickr. Um, we've gotten some wonderful student papers out of it. My favorite was the ways in which the community members think about these pictures and the categories that they make on Flickr versus the way the students and thinking as historians make categories of these pictures. Um, the other thing that's so amazing about this to me is that, again, most of the folks that we're talking to are in their 70s and 80s. They're all going on Flickr. Some of them are learning how to use computers for the first time to go on to see these pictures and to write comments on them. So they're going back and they're identifying all the people in these pictures. And we know every time there's been a funeral of fun of the old Fox Pointers because suddenly a whole new group of people is coming on to, to identify more people. And uh, it's sort of amazing how uh, well this, this project has worked. So come and visit. Uh, you'll see some interesting things. And if nothing else, it's a beautiful house to come visit. Thank you very much. Thank you.